Praise God. Please, when you enter every new month, enter with excitement. He said, this is the day the Lord has made. And so I will do what? I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what happened yesterday, he made me to see today. And the fact that I saw today means there's something in stock for my future. You know why the circumstance that happened to you in the last nine months didn't kill you? Because God has not finished with you. And if God has not finished with you, why must you finish yourself? Everybody else may not like you, but please like yourself. See yourself in the picture of God's plan, not in the picture of people's plan. See yourself in the picture of God's plan, not in the picture of people's plan. And my thought toward you, said the Lord, they are thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you a future. So when you sleep and you wake up, say, Father, thank you. The will of the devil was frustrated. That's why I am here. If it were the plan of Satan, I should have died yesterday. I should have perished last month. I should have ceased to exist in February. But here I am in October. Hallelujah! Satan, you lost it. Ooh. Praise God. Somebody said I was very sick last month. Oh, but you are very well this month. That sickness was not unto death or you have been buried. Enter every new day with excitement. And in the midst of that excitement, you will hear a word from the Lord. And that word of the Lord will empower you to capture the new month. So don't bother about what you didn't have last month. He's waiting for this month for you. You won't miss your, your own here. In Jesus' mighty name. Just like you have heard from that prophetic word from the president of this mission, it's our era of exploit. Era means time season. It's our predestinated time. God is a God of timing. He never comes too late, neither does he appear too early. He's always on time. So you see, in God's program for this year, this month, is to connect you to strange depth and strange levels of breakthrough. Our life is like a building. Begins from the foundation, January. And then begins to add one block after another. One block after another. So be expectant of God that in this month of October, some strange open doors, some breakthroughs you have never recorded since you knew God will be recorded this month. It does not take God donkey years to fulfill his purpose. He just takes a diligent heart to correctly position himself to be a reflection of divine plan. You are not a biological bundle of mistake. No, you are here on divine timetable. What has not happened since January was waiting for now. You are here on an appointment. You will not be disappointed. And in understanding our season of exploit, we are zeroing in every Sunday service on understanding the demands of success. When we talk about exploit, we're actually talking about success in successions. Success in successions. And success simply means satisfactory progress. Making satisfactory progress. Making appreciable, tangible, feelable, touchable progress. And life must be progressive. If it is not, then life is frustrating. Life is made by God to be progressive. The path of the just man is as a shining light. The just man is the man that is justified. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. Okay? For whom he did for no, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his only begotten son. Those he predestinated, he called, he called them to justify them. And then Proverbs chapter 4, 18 now says, now this justified man is supposed to be shining brighter and brighter to culminate back in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, in glory. So glory is the ultimate. 
So the justified man, that is the one that repented of his sin and is accepted into the beloved, and by the blood of Jesus, he's been redeemed. And you are not redeemed to be redeemed. Now, in that environment of redemption, you are justified to make advancement in all departments of your life. So it shouldn't be to you as it happened last year. No. It shouldn't be to you as it happened last month. No, it shouldn't be to you as it happened last week. It's supposed to be getting better. Yeah, people of God, you are growing older. It should be getting better for you. Did you hear what I'm saying to you this morning? You are growing older. It should be getting better. And if it's not getting better, you are missing something. And that's why this month of October, God is going to expose you to you. Expose his divine counsel to you so that you will know the pathway to shiny brighter. Every day, somebody must be congratulating you for something. I say every day, they must be congratulating you for something. Every week, they must be congratulating you for something. Every month, they must be congratulating you for something. He said, but uh, can a man see good and not see evil? It's because you are looking for evil. That's why you see it. And we give back to a child and say, son, in January, you will prosper. In February, you will not prosper. In March, you will pass. In, in May, you will fail your class. How many of you have prayed for your children like that? <laughs> you just want your child to be the top of the class every time. You just be the top of the class every time. And when it's not the top of the class, you are concerned. So God is concerned when you are not on top of life. God is concerned when you are not on top of life. And that's why in this month, of your breaking through, you must know the rudiments of making you a good success in life and then get yourself established in it. Don't miss the Wednesday services. Don't miss the Sunday service. You know why? Keys will be handed over to your life. And if you can unlock what belongs to you in destiny, no devil in hell can hold you down. On Wednesdays, we'll be doing exploring the secrets of success. We started that this last Wednesday and run through it on Friday, Thursday and Friday. If you are not here, pick the CD and expose yourself to learning. You see, God, the Holy Ghost, is the greatest educator. The people who taught you economics in school, whether at primary, second, high school level, or first degree level, or master's level, or PhD level, don't have what you have. I mean, they taught you the principles, but they are not prevailing economically, which means the principle they are teaching you can't make you prosper. If it can, they should be richer than you. A brother came to me in Podacot and he said, I have just registered the University of Podacot of Rivers um, for um, Masters in Business Admin. I said, congratulations. He said, but I'm disturbed. I said, why? He said, I don't know why these, these lecturers are insisting we should buy their handout. I said, I know why. He said, why? I said, because the man wants to eat. And the principal is teaching you is not working for him. If he's working for him, he won't force you to buy handout. He will go and copy chapters of, of, of books of authors and then say, you must buy, register, sign that you have bought or else you won't pass my exam. Why? He's hungry. I said, because the principal is teaching you he's not producing results in his life. I said, so well, get the certificate. Maybe it will help you to connect to some physical, material things. But as for success, find it in God. Your certificate will give you temporary open door. But the counsel of God will give you permanent open door. The kind that no circumstance can destroy. If what they are telling you in the world works, why are we still having problems? So as a redeemed child of God, you are born into distinction. It is your heritage to succeed and keep succeeding till you leave this world. Abraham was old and well stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things, all things. 
he died in absolute wealth. You are born for unusual accomplishment in life. Enviable heights. Unstoppable, undamnable heights. Please unite your mind with that of God for you. It will help you to break free from the limitations of your environment. You are held down, not because it is your destiny to be held down. You are held down because your mind is occupied with circumstantial evils. So what you do with what you hear from God is what determines what you become in life. What you do with what you hear from God. I may also tell you, what you do with what you hear from men limits you to the heights men can take you. But what you do with what you hear from God takes you to the height only God can take you. And I think if God made you, he has a right to know, to tell you where he meant you to be. Glory to God. You are packaged for success. You are divinely wired for enviable progress. That's why when you are so determined and diligently with discipline, focus on a particular thing, you break through it true or false. That means it's possible. Have you ever succeeded in anything in your life before? Have you? So that can be your permanent experience on a daily basis. So success is not an accident. It's a product of one who discovered secrets behind success and doggedly pursued until he breaks through it. So supernatural breakthrough is the outcome of your diligent responsiveness to biblical instructions. If God's word is your source, then God's word is the, is the facility for the resources you require to move your life forward. You can't be born of God and expect man to make you a success. Whatsoever is born of man is man. Whatsoever is born of God is God. John chapter 3. Hallelujah. The little success we have seen in life by walking according to the rudiments of the facts available to natural man is an indication that if we get connected to facts that are available to spiritual men, we'll do better. Every natural thing is corruptible. But every supernatural thing is incorruptible. You are breaking through this time around. That's why I said in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, if you will diligently hearken, just pay attention. Diligently. Pay attention. Observe and then do all that I'm telling you. He said, it will come to pass that God will set you up. Come on, say, Lord, set me up. Set you up on high above all Above all, now you see, you can force a horse to the river, but you can't make it to drink. The same way, no man is the reason for where you are. No man is the reason for what is happening to you. But your responsiveness to scriptural guideline that could lead you to life eternal. There are things men have told me I can never do, but which I'm I'm fully enjoying it to the fullest today because I refuse to listen to men. And just listening to God and responding to his guideline has made me enjoy some things that natural men never thought I could make happen. And that is available to all men and women redeemed by God. Like many years ago, I told my wife, don't tell me it can't happen. Because there is no female Holy Ghost. Have you found one in the Bible? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you. It didn't say if you're a male or female. Acts chapter 1. <laughs> There's no female Holy Ghost. So if you are a redeemed child of God, male or female, you can break through at any limit. Doesn't a woman drive car? 
And so why can't she own car? Hello? Uh, doesn't a woman live in a house? Why can't she buy houses? Don't be a tag along. Stop tying your life to a person. Tie your life to a God. A lady came to me some time back. He said, just pray for me to marry. I know once I'm married, all my problems will be solved. <laughs> I said, I won't pray. He said, number one, if I don't desire to marry a useless woman, why should I pray for a, child, a son of God to marry one that is useless? Love your neighbor as yourself. I can't marry a bundle of trouble. I say, if you are not useful to life, you can't be useful to your husband. God will never wish you to marry his son that he has a destiny for. I say, package yourself as a success. You will attract a successful man. He said, I don't have anybody to help me. I say, you don't need. I will lift up my eyes to the east. Where will my help come from? Where will it come from? My help shall come from the Lord that maketh heaven and the earth. The one who can make heaven and earth can make my life happen. So I told her, I said, go to school. Stop looking for a husband. Before you graduate, your husband will locate you. It's testimony of a woman, 45 years old. He said, no man has ever approached her since she knew herself for marriage. But she told herself, Instead of waiting for the man, I'll be advancing my life and make it tougher for any man to get at me, any useless man to reach me. I'll make it tough because I'm a child of destiny. So she went for her master's, finished, went for her PhD. And then she was at Unilag to defend her PhD thesis. And there are three professors sitting down there sending her, barraging her with questions. And she was asked, answering with sound mind. Like a lady that is in control of life. Because she has spiritual, scriptural facts that is ordering her steps. Instead of bottling her mind up that I'm growing older, nobody is marrying me, I don't know, am I going to die like this? Useless. Useless. Waste of time. Waste of divine resource and energy. She kept pushing her life forward. And among those three professors is also a man there that's never married. And he was caught up with respect for this kind of brain in a woman's clothing. So after the first session, he went to her and said, I respect your brain. You are in full control of this subject matter. The truth is that we have not done the second leg, but you have done very well. How is your family? Say, I'm trusting God. Say, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then after the second session, he said, can we have lunch tomorrow? After lunch, the long and short, he got married. Now they have two children. Got married in Canaan land. It's not a story of uh, in Yugoslavia. Canaan land. Got married at age 46. And still had two children. He said that's all they want to have. Or else they will have had more. Somebody said what about menopause? He died. <laughs> menopause died in the will of God. You are the one limiting your life. The part of the just, just, the justified shines brighter and brighter. So get hold on the facts of life. No man fails with facts. Say, I cannot fail. I'm saying it as if you mean it. You see, we don't come to church to learn theology. We come to church to learn life. And when we learn it, we go to town and put it into practice. So we can teach men how to live life. Ye are the light of the world. Light shows people the way. It's not people you look looking confused and morose. When you have a long face, you have a long trouble. So shutting your long face and a, it is the quality of your engagement 
with spiritual facts that connects you to your mysterious blessings in God. Look at that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. He said, he said take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Instructions lead you away from destructions and connect you to your supernatural environment of greatness. Now, breakthrough in life is not a promise but a covenant. Be minding those statements we are making this morning. It's not a promise, it's a covenant. God didn't promise you success. God ordered and created you for success. And if that will happen, you must do certain things. There are certain things you must come abreast with and then be ready to comply with. You can have a desire to be a medical doctor. But you see, you can't be a medical doctor, a professional medical doctor, without going through a medical school. And you can't leave uh, your mother's breast and be applying to a medical school. You go through the rudiments of learning. The same way you are packaged for success, but you see, you need to know the right step to take the right key to use from the author of success. He knows your future from, the, from your, your beginning. So he's the one who can lead you into it. So what do we do? We take hold of instruction from him. So breakthrough is, is, uh, is not a promise. Oh, God has promised me. Fine. It becomes a covenant when you know the part you should play in order to make that promise a reality. Every word of God is packaged with blessings, but with conditions. It's going to cost you something, but it is meant for you. Hallelujah. I mean, why can't they look at you and say, because your dad is a professor, so son, you are honorary professor. Or your father is a general in the army, so son, you are also a general in the army. It's never conferred. You must go through the ranks. Uh -huh. And sometimes suffer the bullets and survive. So your star can increase. There is no general without a scar. The scars are evidences of the, things, the prices he has to pay to arrive as a general. You are created to be a general. You are supposed to be a director of life, not a manager in life. Stop managing. Tell your neighbor for me, stop managing. Stop managing. He said in Genesis 17, told Abraham, I will make my covenant between me and you. You walk with me. Walk with me. I will make my covenant between me and you. And this is what you are supposed to do. And if you follow the history of Abraham, every step of the way, he was having some demands on his life. And those demands are not supposed to cripple him. They are actually supposed to groom, groom him for the next phase of his advancement in life. By Genesis 24, no man was above Abraham in the world. No man. You get there. I say you will get there. God is not committed to deliver the proofs of success until you adequately fulfill your own part. God is not committed to fulfill the proofs of success in your life until you adequately and fully fulfill your own part. So when you consciously subscribe to the practice of God's success instructions. You are programming yourself to be an outstanding success among men. All students are in the same class, but not all students get the same marks. Why? Each student decides how diligently he wants to focus on the subject that is being taught so that he can break through with high marks. If you ask them, the one who got first from the back and the one who got first from the front, they did different things with what they had. Some years back in my form three, we did a test in mathematics 
and I got three over 20. But as they were distributing the paper, because they will call your name and give you your own paper. Call your name, and the one who did well, the teacher will say, very good, very good. Those who didn't do well, say, just take your paper and leave it. <laughs> you will leave your seat and come and collect your own paper. Say, see, see, 29 and a half, 29 and a half. Come and clap for him. Very good. But those of us who didn't do it, say, no, take, take your paper. And leave. <laughs> After the teacher left, we had a recess. So I, I had my paper in my hand. I was not happy at all. And I saw two groups outside. On the left were complainants. It's a wicked teacher. Wicked. Did, did he even he did, did he teach us number two? <laughs> he didn't teach us number two. He's, he wanted all of us to fail. But on this side, there were a few others who were saying, oh boy, I just made that little mistake. I could have gotten all. He said, I want to say, ah, but you got 29 now. You are better than me. Me, I got only 25. I now stood in the middle. I was looking here and looking here. I asked myself, which one do you belong to? And I said, I belong to this group. I went to the dormitory and I looked at my face in the mirror and I said, oh boy, you are not a failure. Amen. You bank this one, but you won't bank your life. Amen. I was determined to come out of the past. We're all in the class. If they didn't teach number two, why didn't you ask the other ones they taught you? <laughs> if you have five questions and you don't know one, I mean, if you get all the other four, that's a major, that's excellent. And so why are you complaining about number two? What about the number they taught you? And you still got zero. So what I did was a wise step. I went to the young man that got 29 and a half. And I told him, I said, you know this subject better than me. Now teach me. What, what is the formula you used? I forced myself to be his friend. I mean, a class of 25 people or 30 people, there are people you don't even talk to at all. He was one of those people I don't talk to. But when I discover he has brain and he's making gain, I'll be stupid to make him my, my enemy. So we're doing lessons together. In those days, his CV... Uh, Durell for algebra. I finished that book. Did all the work examples as he was teaching me and training me. That was it. My mathematical mind opened up. On the final exam, I got 65 over 70 percent. Over 70. Add my three to it. It became 68. That was the best mark. After the exam, he told me he made some blunders. He himself, the guy told me, I made some blunders and I know I didn't do very well in that. So I overtook him. So in that session, in that session, in that class, I was the best, I got the best gift for mathematics. From three to 68. Why? You are packaged for it. But you need to do what those who are winning do before you can win. Don't say, but God has promised me. Yes. There's a demand on you. It is a covenant. And the way to prove the covenant is for you to see the promise and then know what you should do. Like Papa said, a great coach does not make a great player. He will tell you the rules of the game. It's your responsibility to identify yourself with the rules and then play it according to the rule. And then you end up as a champion sportsman. You are a champion sportman. It's time to break free. Stop complaining about circumstances. It is the same circumstances below him, befalling everybody. The same exam of life we are all writing. Why are you failing? And others are succeeding in it. Say, I must succeed. Say it as if you mean it. I must succeed. One major demand of success that we are running up with this morning 
is spiritual empowerment. Spiritual empowerment. Because you have a source in the realm of the spirit, you must be divinely enabled for you to succeed in the dimension God has in mind for you. You see, God has made a, a very high standard for man, for those who are in his kingdom. Very high standard. He said, ye are the salt of the earth. Now, a salt is what sweetens. You add color to your environment. Now, ask yourself, how many people can you add color to their life when there's no color in your life? It's a high, high, high level standard. Ye are the light of the world. Now, the light, light simply means sound understanding. A man of sound understanding, a man of supernatural intelligence. There's someone who can tell others how to live life. Someone who can tell others how to succeed in life. Someone who can tell others how to find a blissful marriage life. Someone who can tell others how to succeed extraordinarily in business. Because he has something to show with his billions. With his successful billions. And then the number of people working in his, in his, in his conglomerate of businesses. That's the light of the world. He knows what to do and he's doing it. So others are copying him. That's the high standard for every redeemed child of God. Am I communicating with you? Now, so if there's such a high standard, then I need his help to be able to meet up with that standard. That's your little card that you are, you, are, you, are, uh, you are cleaning every morning. It's not the light of the world. There are people using better cars. The house you are in now, that mortgage is killing you and weighing you down. That's not your level. Stop measuring yourself with the standard of men. Measure yourself with the standard of God because you are meant to be a God. Where you are coming from should determine your goal. You are a heavenly being. You are a creature of God. Until your success is likened to his level. He said we are, we, are, we are predestinated to be conformed to the image of his only begotten son. That's the standard. His only begotten son. He called us brethren. So you are Jesus' brother. You are Jesus' sister. Can your success now be measured with this kind of success? If not, then you need to be empowered the way he was empowered. So you can be able to do what he could do and be the glory in the hand of God. Be a crown in the creatures of God. Man was made to head all of God's creation. That's what we are meant to be. That is the standard. Now, if that is it, we must be divinely equipped for it. Zechariah chapter 1, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. He said, not by power, not by might, but how? By my spirit. This height is achievable only by my spirit. God's covenant of exploit will require God's power to bring you into fulfillment of it. So your exploit in life, your success in life is directly proportional to the level of empowerment you enjoy from God. Now look at this power from God at two dimensions. There's the power to comprehend. That is ability to have sound understanding of life. Understanding is equated to, to your intelligence. And everyone connected to God in scriptures are supernaturally intelligent. To a point that men wonder at their products. They look at Jesus and say, where, where is this man? Where does he have this manner of wisdom? And manner of great works. So sound mind produces great results. Jesus operated at a height of intelligence that supersedes the intelligence of men. He can't be talking to modern men and modern men will be looking at him as a stupid guy. He's not your kind of person that an unbeliever will interview and you'll be, you'll be sweating in front of them. An unbeliever is interviewing you for a job and you are sweating. You are seated above them all. So you 
you should know about them all. Why? Because you are operating at a level beyond normal men. So your mind must be powered. That's what Daniel enjoyed. Daniel chapter 2, verse 16 and 19 to 22. The king was confused. He had a dream and he forgot his dream, which is normal with normal men. They have dreams they don't remember. And the king of Babylon had a dream and he forgot the dream. He now told all his wise men, I'll kill all of you if you don't tell me my dream and interpret it. Eh? If I were there at that time, I would say, King, you are stupid. You are supposed to be the one to tell us your dream. How can you be forgetting your dream and then you are blaming all of us for not knowing your dream and not the interpretation? And the king was, was serious. And Daniel happens to be one of the wise men in Babylon. So he went to the king's uh, um, aide de camp and said, tell the king to relax. Give us time. We will show the king the dream and the interpretation. Let him relax. And Daniel went to his company. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. He said, come on, let us call the God of heaven. The one who has, who has all the secrets in his hand. He said, he's the God of life. He said, but the darkness is under his control. He said, he's the one who set up kings and, and bring kings down. And as they call on him, intelligence came. Intelligence came. And the secret was revealed unto Daniel in the night time. And he told the king the matter. And Daniel became a celebrity in the land of his captivity. Your color is not the reason why you're on the floor. It's your brain. Write it down, write it down. Stop looking at me like that. You know, I used to tell them in Nigeria, when they say, you see, they are using, uh, they are using uh, tribalism, they are using ethnicity to sidetrack us. I say it's because you don't have brain. No, no organization refuses an outstanding staff. Just be outstanding. And they will forget where you came from. Where you came from matter because they have to push you along. Let's find where we can just plug them in. Okay, how many quota? What quota do they have for the... Five. Okay. How many do we have? Four. Ah, so put him there. Since he's an Aousa man, and uh, we need five Aousa people there. So put him there. Whether he has brain or doesn't have it, it's, it's a quota. <laughs> but your quota is not according to man's standard. You stand out. Hallelujah. You stand out. Be, be, be a problem solver, and the organization will celebrate you. They will forget where you came from. That's what happened to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 5, the same thing happened to him. The king was confused. He said, look, 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 there's a man in this kingdom. He has been there in the days of your forefathers. There's a man in this kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy God is working in him. He has such an intelligence that he can break hard sentences. In other words, when others are confused, he knows what to do. That's what will make you a good successor. Doing things that men are confused about will bring you out of ordinary men. It's your turn. Stop calling yourself a confused being. You are not confused. You are not stranded. You just didn't know what to do. So get empowered by the Holy Ghost. Let your brain wake up with supernatural intelligence. Begin to give solution to people's problem. They will soon make you a center of attraction. Hallelujah. This commission got to where it is today not because we're just speaking in tongues. It's because intelligent works are taking place. Every venture is successful. Church sector, successful. Over 5,000 branches in Nigeria. Over 600 branches in Africa. And now we are blessing Europe. And now America is in trouble under the siege of this commission. Am I communicating with you? So when that kind of a man stand up, presidents will say, when we went to celebrate his birthday, two, two generals, retired generals, retired presidents, made their way to Canaan land. In all traffic, and in all the rain and difficulty, they came there to salute the brain of this 60-year-old enigma. Why did they come? There are people, other people celebrating Britain that day that they wouldn't bother to even think about, not talk of going there. The governors that couldn't come sent 
representative. The pres pre standing president of Nigeria sent a high, high level delegate and apologized for not coming. Apologized to a citizen for not coming. For your information, the foundation laying of two other universities is going to happen this month. Yeah. Two, one in Abuja, one in Calabar. The medical center, or Tramoda Medical Center, is, is going to open up before the end of this month in Kenan land. Students of Covenant University have given birth to hybrid vehicles. Hybrid. That's using both battery and fuel. So we're going to be using it to run the, what do you call it? The shuttle in Canaan land. And then papers have been organized to license us to produce it at commercial scale. Sit down there. <laughs> now, if things like this are happening where you say you are a member, that is saying that somebody has located God's divine opportunities and privileges and plugged himself into it and is never tired of breaking a new leaf, showing the way out. When others are complaining in Nigeria, some people are profaning solutions. Now, just this morning, I heard in the announcement in Canaan land that all waste, material, or foodstuff should be gathered at a point because it's going to be recycled to produce another item. Everybody shouted. Why people are crying? No money. There's no money. The government is bad. Everybody is corrupt. You that is not corrupt, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the question you ask yourself. What are you doing? Why are you joining the bandwagon of complainants? When you are supposed to, want to be the one to show others where to go, we'll get there. I said, we will get there. So every success story in the Bible are based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. Abraham enjoyed the same, Isaac, Moses. And he said about you, as many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are what? The sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is the, is the agent of divine information. When the spirit of truth shall come, it will guide you into all truth. John chapter 16 verse 13. When the spirit of truth comes, that is when you are divinely empowered, you are divinely guided to use the truth that is spiritual facts to order your steps into strange heights among men. The Holy Spirit illuminates your mind, helps you to interpret what you see in the way it will produce results in your hand. That is to say, give you creative understanding. You look at a wood and you know what to do to make money out of it. When others are complaining, I'm stranded. All you are saying is how to generate funds. By turning what you have in your hand to something that people need. You need the Holy Ghost for that. No man can know something and not practice it. You don't know it. That's why you are not using it. But it's there. It's available. In this, my last trip, I was talking to three people, one of the three of my sons who came around, who had our side. So I was asking them about business and they said something. I said, no, 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 no. But you should have left that level by now. I said, you should have left that level by now. I said, because... He, didn't you understand that if you take this step, if you take this time to step, you could have multiplied that money threefold. He said, hey, how come I didn't think like that? I said, why did you put your Holy Ghost? <laughs> he said, the spirit of truth shall come and it will guide you into all truth. The author of a thing cannot be confused about the thing. God made the earth. The Holy Ghost is the interpreter of what God made. Can't be confused here. By the help of the Holy Ghost, I have never done anything that didn't go forward. Why? He tells me what to do. It's your turn. I say, it is your turn. Amen. Now, the other dimension of the Holy Ghost is the power to subdue evil. And you need that. 
Because he says, it is through the greatness of thy power that your enemies shall submit themselves. Psalm 66 verse 3. It is through the greatness of his power. So every spiritual barrier against your rising into success or exploit in life as a believer requires God's power to subdue it. Every spiritual barrier. It is confirmed in scripture that there are barriers. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. For a great door and effectual has been opened to me, but there are many adversaries. Now, we don't sit down around adversaries complaining to them. We use the power of God through the Holy Ghost by the anointing of the Holy Ghost to subdue them. Barriers are not made to stagnate you. Barriers came to make you a champion. Every child born to a family, male or female, has capacity for a male, has capacity to be a man, right? Every female baby has capacity to be a great lady. But then the baby can't be prevented from exercising his or her limbs, and you expect him to be able to use the limbs to carry his body. And to help the child to make the brain wake up, you start exposing the child, say, touch your nose. And then it does like this. No, that's not nose. Nose. Say nose. 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 Touch your lips. Lips. You know what you are doing? He has the facility, but he needed to be helped to engage that facility in progressing his life. The Holy Spirit is heaven's facility to increase you, empower you to run the race of life successfully. So don't claim you are, a, you are a born again child of God without an experiential contact with the Holy Spirit. You need him. I say you need him. His body shall be taken from your neck, from your shoulder. His yoke shall be destroyed, shall be broken from your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the energizer of the believer to blaze the new trend in spite of changing circumstances. When I got to Ghana, I was told, as a stranger, you can't grow church here. And I replied this man, and the man saying it has been 25 years in ministry. And he has examples to show that those who come from outside Ghana don't have big churches here. They struggle. Because Ghanaians prefer their own people. And he gave me examples to prove. But I replied him. I said, I didn't come to Ghana with a Nigerian Jesus. If I came with a Nigerian Jesus, Ghanaians won't listen to me. But I came in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I found a scripture. Everywhere Jesus went, the city moved. I said, this city will move. And in less than one year, we're over 4,000. I mean 4,000 adults, not children. In less than two years, we bought a property over one million dollars without seeking help from, from headquarters. That property is still there now, standing at the center of town. And many pastors that I met in ministry as a young pastor started asking me, how did you do that? It is the Holy Ghost. You don't run divine agenda in the arms of the flesh. It will fail. So all this connection you are looking for, looking for people who will borrow you, looking for people who will help you, is the reason why you are not making runs. Lift up your eyes to the east and engage yourself in supernatural power. A man in the Holy Ghost is a man rooted with favor. Before you ask, they will give you. Didn't you hear that when Saul was anointed? Samuel said, as you depart from me today, you will meet people. They will salute you and give you things. He said, when they give you, collect it from them. And then suddenly you will find yourself among the prophets. And you begin to prophesy. That is, the anointing turns you to a strange personality. So no obstacles could stop you. The things that were lost in your life are now found. Why? Because the anointing will destroy the yoke. Everything that has limited you since January is losing power over you this month. If you believe that, say convincing amen. It's your turn. It is your turn. It is said of King Cyrus after he was anointed, that he will break all limits. Go and read it, Isaiah 45, verses 1 to 3. 
It will break all limits. 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 The things that are hidden in secret places will come to his light. The hidden riches, the hidden wealth will come to his hand. Why? Because he carries an anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit do two major things in your life. Helps you to re revoke and destroy barriers so you can rise above limits. And then gives you supernatural intelligence so you can coordinate facts of life to produce strange results. You coordinate the facts of life to produce strange results. So the Holy Ghost works in your brain and works in your heart. Works in your brain, works in your heart. We do these two forces complete in you. You are unbeatable, unstoppable, unkillable, undamnable, and unharassable. You will not fail anymore. Rise up on your feet. Somebody said, how do I engage this power of the Holy Ghost? Number one, you must be born again. Whatsoever is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit, you must be born again. And then when you are born again, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, crave for the empowerment. Crave, be thirsty, be desperate for the empowerment, tangible effect of the Holy Ghost in my life. How do you do that? By praying. And sometimes, coupling with fasting. So you can provoke the anointing. A desperation. A, there are times in your life you need to set yourself apart. If you are tired of the way things are happening around you, set yourself apart. Go on a fast. One day, two days, three days. And, and go in a combat with the Holy Ghost. I'm not a dull baby here. I won't die a failure here. I won't die a tag along here. I won't be a burden on life. Let me look at that. Pakoste. Holy Spirit, bring me out of me. Let my real person come out here. Let, let there be a change. I, I should stop saying I'm confused. I, I hate people say I'm confused. How can you be confused in the atmosphere of the Holy Ghost? All you need is to maintain quietness somewhere and begin to roll out and wind yourself up. I did a course in Ghana on um, public administration. And one of the courses I have to take is Constitution of Ghana. I'm not a law person. I didn't do humanities. So when I picked the Constitution, I couldn't understand the logic. I was reading it. It's English, oh. But it sounds like Greek to me. Because they won't write plain English. They're now writing straightforward things. They just be cornering and cornering words like that. And I said, that, I told my wife, I said, what am I even doing in that place, sir? I won't do this thing. My wife said, eh, you are running away. But you stand on the altar and you say you cannot fail. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? Is it not me who went there? And if I, if I, if I like, I will leave the place. I said, leave the place. But stop telling people you cannot fail. She went to bed, 2 a.m. that night, I, I took the constitution. I said, I won't run away from you. <laughs> the people who wrote you are not born again. How can I have the mind of Christ and not know what men wrote? So book open to me now. Constitution open to me. Nikusianga, no tojabe, egalakoto, oprato. I was marching in my room. And opening every page. I can know all things. I can have understanding of all things. The spirit of the ancient of days reside in me. I have a quickness spirit. I have the mind of Christ. I know you, constitution. I know you. I interpret you. I'm not a failure. The following day, I sat down. As if I was there when they were writing it. It was just flowing. And flowing. Now, consider this. Anytime I go to class, that class is, is a lawyer who comes there to teach us. I don't pay attention because I don't understand what they are saying. So he, I was the only reverend in that class. So he would call me and say, Reverend, pray for us. So I will pray. And he closed Reverend, close us in prayer. He was just making a jest of me. Uh, because there's no, I don't make contribution. I don't say anything. I just sit down in one corner and be looking at them. <laughs> And when you finish, you will go away. I was planning of how not to write the exam until my wife challenged me. May you have somebody who provokes you to success. Yeah. Instead of telling you, hey, don't worry, don't worry. See, it's not everybody who is cut out for things like that. There's nothing I'm not cut out for. I'm cut out for success. So if anybody can succeed in any dimension, I can succeed there. Yeah. That's the understanding you should have. 
Never allow failure to make you relevant to life. Ask yourself, I'm changing levels. Where I read that night was where the lecturer was trying to give explanations. And he misquote a section there. So I said, excuse me, sir. He said, ah, reverend. <laughs> reverend, it's not time to pray. I said, it's not prayer. I just want to make an observation. Is there observation? He was shocked. He was embarrassed. He said, yes. I said, sir, you are trying to make a point on the law of contract there. And the section you quoted is not very relevant. Because in section so-and-so, subsection so-and-so, in the constitution of Ghana, as regards contract of offer and sales, this is what should have been. He said, Reverend? <laughs> Where, re, re, Reverend, are you the one talking? He said, why have you kept quiet all this while? I said, I just found it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. At the end of that course, I got 75%, which was the best mark. And there were law graduates in the same class with me. It was a school for directors. Why? Your father is the foundation of knowledge. He can't be confused about anything. And he sent the Holy Ghost to the earth so that you can reign here and not be ruined here. Lift up your two hands. Holy Spirit, empower me. Empower me. I must reign in life. Empower me. Empower me. Empower me. Holy Spirit, empower me. Empower me. Empower me. I must reign in life. Empower me. Empower me. Empower me. Spirit of the living God, I need you. I must break through into exploit. I must not be stranded among mortal men. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. Lord, change my experience. Empower me. Quicken my brain. Quicken my brain. Empower me to subdue every barrier. Empower me. Empower me! Spirit of the living God, equip me with the energy of heaven. Likatoshe esapuraba. Enough of this stagnating experience. Enough of these limitations in my life. Enough of this confusion in my mind. Power me up. Power me up. Holy Spirit of God, power me up. I need you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Papa went for a lecture in the University of Ife. And in that lecture, there are many professors. And incidentally, it was in a lecture theater, and the light there was not very good. So the note he wrote, he couldn't even see it. And they didn't bring him lantern so that he can read. And they gave him a microphone, and he started. Without looking at any page, he quoted 69 scriptures. It was the professor who told him. He said, I was writing them down. He said, where did you get this electric brain from? Where did you get this electric brain from? He was talking to professors of the Lord. I mean, those who went to school to have PhD. And he's a young guy. That was 1994. And he was quoting, quoting scriptures without looking at the book. And not making a mistake. After the lecture, a senior professoral lecturer came and said, Young man, where did you get this electric brain from? The Holy Ghost is the electricity that ignites a mortal man's brain and make him think and talk and walk like a God. This is your season. This is your era. Don't miss it this time around. The facility to make it happen is in the air. It is here already. I said it is here for you. It is here for you. So wake up. Take time out this month and give yourself a spiritual environment. Go one day, two days, and said, Holy Ghost, wake up this brain. Holy Spirit, break away this barrier. I can't be limited. I am ordained to reign. I am ordained to succeed. I am ordained to do exploit. Not to be exploited. Do something about your life. And stop waiting for it to happen. God has done all that he needed to do. It's your turn to break the limits. Break the limits. I don't accept no for an answer. I keep digging at it until I find it out. It may take a little time, but when you find it, people will find you. 
<laughs> it may take a little time, but when you find it, people will find you. This month you are breaking loose. This month you are breaking loose. I said, this month you are breaking free in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs>